Right, now... You might be wondering, why is there a big pink bottle off to my left? Why does it have the word voodoo prominently displayed on it? And why does it seem to say something about chiffon cooler ale? And those of you in the know, and especially those of you from Oregon, USA, will roll your eyes and think, oh god, he's discovered that weird stuff that Rogue, Bre Rogue Ale's put out. And I have. Saw it at the uh, Liquor King down the road, actually. So, what I did, I sort of looked at it the first time when I was buying something else, something relatively mainstream. Um, I think it was a Garage Project Death from Above, a uh, couple with uh, one of Wike and I's um, North End Pilsners. I mean, I'll get into those some other time. But in any case, yes, I finally did it. So, into the bathroom, and there it is, in all its glory, so big. You can't even think that my old watercolour pad isn't an adequate backdrop for it. The Rogue Ales Voodoo Donut Lemon Chiffon Cruller Ale. Because apparently what they do is with this thing is it's actually actually a collaboration between Rogue Ales of Newport, Oregon, 97365, so now a new zip code, folks, and an outfit called Voodoo Donut, who apparently make... Uh, the eponymous sweets. <sighs> Actually, we haven't had a donut shop here in Paraparumu for decades. There used to be a place called Yankee Doodle Donuts, but that was before Coastlands had this big, big revamp. In fact, I think there used to be on the uh, second floor, the mezzanine, where Farmers is now. And, um, yeah, I, it was always uh, an occasion and a pleasure to go in there and um, in, enjoy a crawler or something like that. Nowadays, you can get donuts in the supermarket, but they're all pre-packaged in, uh, in plastic, and they're, uh, and they're small things, probably about one-third the, you know, you could stack three of them on top of each other, and they just reach the top of the bottle, and um, they're all cakey and cluggy, and they're not actually very nice. But, so, uh, yeah, I mean, you really do need a proper donut shop again. Donuts and hot dogs. I'm sure there's got to be a business opportunity in there somewhere for somebody who doesn't mind uh, slaving over a hot deep fryer or broiler or whatever. So, if anybody wants to uh, get their foot in the door and start that kind of uh, all-American nostalgia madness, go for it. I'm sure that there are other people out there who could think of uh, other fine uh, American fast foods to add to the mix. But in any case, we're not here to talk about uh, what people could do with uh, a potential new fast food, fast food franchise. That's probably going to have people staying away in droves because A, it's not hamburgers or Indian or kebabs or whatever. We're here to drink a donut. The glass is ready. The bottle is ready. All 650 mils of it. This is one pint. Oh, no, hang on, it's a quart! Hang on, one pint, 9.4 fluid ounces, 750 mils. I don't know which is which. Either this is a pint, which I think is about 650 mils, or it's a quart, which I've always been told is 750 mils. I don't know what the difference is. Anyway, let's take a look at, look at the back. 13 ingredients it says in here. We've got, uh, I mean, it tells you what the um, malts are. We've got two row Munich, Rogue Farms Dare and Risk malts. They've got uh, Perla and Sterling hops, lemon juice, lemon extract, vanilla beans, vanilla extract, marshmallows, free range coastal water. How the hell is coastal water free range? Do they just stick a hose in a local stream or something? And Pac Man yeast. At least you can say you know what you're getting with this stuff. Just enough for uh, pretension to be interesting, and I'm not really sure what the different types of malts tell us, but we've got thir you've got uh, 13 different ingredients here, and I'm expecting um, a bit of bite from the lemon and a lot of sweetness from uh, from the marshmallows and the vanilla. Salad. Okay, nose. Oh, I can smell the lemon. Oh, yes, big hit of lemon. 
So let's have a look at it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, sort of light amber, more golden, I think. Oh yes, is that uh, definite lemon juice nose on it? Lemon juice or no lemon squash lemonade? Interesting. Golden color. No way to find out. <sighs> As the great man once said, I'm not afraid to die, I'll try. I've never drunk a donut before. Not even at Hashikozaki. Ooh. Ooh. I, I can feel the vanilla in there. It's like a vanilla lemony and there's definitely a it's, like, it's something else there's an aftertaste it's not quite it's not quite lemon it's um it's not quite vanilla either I'm wondering if that's a marshmallow that's giving it that not quite round, not quite rounded off, sort of champer feel on tea feel or flavour at the back. It always makes me think of coconut, but they didn't say anything about coconut, so I don't know, maybe that's uh, part of the malts. Um, what have we got again? Let's take a look. Well, we've got some Munich malts in there, it could be that. Or maybe it, or maybe it's the yeast. I'm not quite sure, but this is actually quite interesting. It's a very peculiar one. It, it's not sickly sweet like I was uh, dreading. I mean, we're talking about voodoo. We're talking about donuts, and donuts typically, uh, well, they don't. They taste doughy, slightly sweetish dough, and then you have got the, whatever the icing you've got on top, which it gives it all the sweetness and the flavour for that matter. Actually, it's something disturbing, isn't it? Hmm. I've got to admit, it's the additional flavours of vanilla and lemon that dominate in this thing. It's um, a rather peculiar one. I'm not entirely certain. I've got my suspicions about uh, when this would be best served and what kind of food would go with it. Can you give me a few minutes? I'm not sure what to make of this beer. I'm going to be honest about that. I'm dead certain. You know, when I started drinking it, I was thinking, this would be a nice dessert beer. Go well with a citrus dessert or something. Or compliment it, you know. But the more I drank it, the more I started tasting less of the lemon and more of the vanilla. And then I realised, I'm not entirely sure I'm tasting the beer at all. Did I mention that this is a six or seven hundred and fifty ml bottle? It's quite a long way to go to figure out whether or not this is any good. I mean, hey, it's a fun beer to drink. It's a challenge, you know. Hey, Voodoo Donut! When you've seen that before, let's have a go at it. Yeah, have a go at it. I'll tell you this, I was thinking this compliments dessert, no, if you have a bottle of this for yourself, you have had dessert, nope, if you want to accompany this with food, well, one of the things you can do is you can get several glasses and share this amongst your friends, you know, dare them, come on, you going to drink out of this pink bottle, going to try the voodoo donut, and have a bowl of chips ready, I mean, okay, they can be, uh, you know, a packet of Bluebird that you've just uh, poured into a bowl, or you can uh, be at somewhere like Hashigosaki where you can get them uh, freshly deep fried. Having a blob of wasabi sauce wouldn't be too bad either, you know, it would cut the sweetness, because this thing, remember, is only about 20 IBU. 
It's not very bitter at all. It's an ale. Not a pale ale, not an India pale ale, but an ale. An ale, which I'm sorry to say, is overwhelmed by the lemon juice, the lemon extract, the vanilla beans, the vanilla extract. I'm not entirely sure that, um, well, at least Rogue have done this, and I should point out that last I looked, there were still two bottles at the Liquor King. I'm not sure that, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure that I would drink this again. This is one of those one in a night beers. The one that you can say, okay, or we're still one of the once in a lifetime. Okay, I've drunk this. Can I have something that actually tastes like a beer now? <sighs> oh well. I'm not dead. I might as well try it. May Baron Samedi have uh, mercy on my soul. Now, the day that I got that voodoo donut, I also saw something else that was more or less pink. More precisely, this. It's a box, yes. It's full of beer, yes. Am I going to drink them all tonight? No. Let's see what it says. Well, first off, it's a Townsend's Sutton Who American Amber Ale from Special from Liquor King. Or at least it will be. Actually, it is, but uh, don't you need really, really need to tell that to their new computer systems, which, as usual, for computer systems, aren't working. So. As you do. Aren't you a lucky little bear, aren't you? You lucky, lucky little dancing. <laughs> yes, you are going to be taken into the thrilling and photogenic environment of the bathroom. And you are going to get your beauty shot, aren't you? Y yes, you are. You cutie, you. You, uh, what the heck are you anyway? An American Amber Ale, indeed. Okay, let's go into the bathroom and photograph you! I'm not entirely sure, but I think I can still smell the voodoo donut in that glass. I've just washed it out. But, we're going to, going to sort of straddle awkwardly the Pacific Ocean, because I have As you probably guessed, well, I've just shown you the box, haven't I? I've shown you been taking it out. Despite my mother walking into the room and being concerned that I'm going to drink a lot tonight, which I don't intend to. I mean, okay, there was that one awkward incident where uh, I drank an entire box of uh, DB Bitter. You know, an entire dozen of DB Bitter in one night. Mainly because it was DB, so it wasn't bitter. But in any case, what is this? Well, um, let's take a look at the uh, bottle itself. It's a Townsend Sutton Who American Amber Ale. It's not particularly strong. It's only about 4.7% ABV. It's by Townsend's Brewing Company of Nelson, New Zealand. That's the represent. But what, what do I get? What the heck is an American Amber Ale? I mean, I'm used to American Pale Ales. I mean, I know what they do. They uh, showcase things like Amarillo and Citra Hops. Um, which give you uh, lots of stone fruity goodness, but uh, they've still got that uh, hoppy bite to them, as opposed to the bloody voodoo donut, which didn't taste like anything to me except the uh, extra flavorings. Actually, now that I remember, think about it, it reminds me of something I drank in the early 2000s, maybe 2002, 2003. There was, I was able to get told of some 
American-based alcoholic lemonade or something like that. That's what it reminds me of. Anyway. Hello, Sutton Who. I'd like to introduce you to a gloss. Here's the matchmaker. As you do. I think you can bear it. It shouldn't affect the taste. Oh, look at that. It's a dark colour. Um, and it has a multi taste smear. It has a very multi scent to it. I like that. It, it, it smells malty to me anyway. I think that's what malt's supposed to taste, smell like. So, ooh, that smells good. I just hope that uh, that voodoo donut has not tainted my taste buds so much. Ooh. Whatever this it is amber. Definitely amber. I can taste the amber. It is an amber ale, alright. It is a yeah sort of slop some. I might have a second one later on. But not before I've finished creating the uh, basic material for this podcast. Which will be uh, which will be uploaded Wednesday the uh, let me see, 18th, 17th 22nd of August. Yeah, I think I'll do these uh, weekly anyway. It stops me from having to worry about should I try something new every week? Because I know I will. It is two things that are new every week. At least for you, not for me. But I am getting lovely amber hits. I mean, they're not as strong, I think, as uh, the Stoke amber. But, ooh. Mm -mm -mm. The box and the label don't actually go into much detail about um, what kind of um, malts are used. Are they, are they American malts? Do they have to be imported? Does it use American yeast? Does it use American hops in there? Actually, that would be interesting. Most American hops that I've experienced have always been in the context of a pale or India pale ale, which basically means hopped up to absolute buggery and beyond. You know, I still think that it would be a good name for a bar, you know, buggery. Where are you going? I'm going to buggery. Or somebody tells you, well, you can go to buggery. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll see you there. Cheers. Hmm. Lovely. Lovely amber malts. Lovely amber malts all over my tongue. Yes. This thing from Townsend, so I can get into. Um, at the time of recording this, they're on special at the Liquor King, which is uh, down on what's called Cavity Landing in Paraparumu. Well, for me, anyway. And uh, you can get them for $14.99, assuming that their uh, computers ever, computer systems ever start working the way they're supposed to. Trust me, I know all about these uh, retail computer systems. They never do what you want them to. Then they break down and do even less than you want them to. And then they get started up again, and they do even less still than you want them to. Trust me, I work in uh, customer service and retail, so I know how these bloody things go. Excuse me?